same perplexing question. It goes to the core of quantum mechanics and even our very understanding of matter. Is light a particle or a wave? Experiments have revealed that light has the properties of both a particle and a wave, but how can it be both a particle and a wave? Then we find this to be the case for all electromagnetic radiation and all matter. This leaves the world's brightest minds still searching for answers to this basic question. Is matter a particle or a wave? In this video series, you will be shown the solution to our dilemma. In fact, you are looking at that solution right now. The fields shown around the green photon are electromagnetic fields of opposite polarity, with the red field being of north magnetic orientation and the blue field being of south magnetic orientation. It will be proven that this is actually the way that magnetic fields are structured around all matter. This applies from the smallest particles we have discovered to the largest structures in space. If you were to measure these fields with a compass, their magnetic fields would appear identical to the magnetic fields of a bar magnet. This also means that when we measured the magnetic fields of matter with other methods in the lab, we also assume that matter had a bar magnet type of magnetic field, but this assumption was a mistake. So until now we have incorrectly assumed that electrons and other matter have a magnetic field shape as shown in this drawing. But we must realize that the fields around an electron as well as around all other matter are actually two opposing bowl-shaped electromagnetic fields. Unless we properly understand this basic magnetic field structure, we will never be able to properly understand the fundamental forces of matter from the subatomic to the galactic. In this presentation, you will be shown that correcting this one basic misunderstanding of magnetic fields also explains most all of our problems in physics and astrophysics. To further understand these magnetic fields and validate this new theory, hundreds of experiments were conducted utilizing a vacuum chamber and specially constructed bowl-shaped magnetic field emitters. When 70,000 volts of electricity is applied, the plasma formations that you are now seeing appear. A variety of purging gases were used in these experiments. This includes ordinary air, argon, hydrogen, and helium. The spacing and orientation of the magnetic field emitters were varied in many ways as well. The magnetic field emitters were suspended on non-conductive high-strength microfilament line attached to magnetic supports on the inner surface of the vacuum chamber. Then to hold these supports in place, high-strength magnets were utilized on the outer surface of the vacuum chamber. This arrangement allows for the adjustment of the magnetic field emitters while the experiment is running. The small microfilament support lines also offer minimum disturbance of the plasma flow around the fields and therefore a more realistic experimental result. A variety of bowl-shaped magnetic field emitters were utilized in these experiments in order to reveal how changing the geometry of the field emitters affects the matter around them. As you can clearly see here, a change of magnetic field emitter geometry also results in a change in the shape of the plasma formation within the vacuum chamber. By adjusting the exposure settings on the camera, an X-shaped pattern is revealed between the magnetic field emitters that is amazingly similar to the shape of the red square nebula. 
You can even see the bowl shape of the magnetic fields in the Red Square Nebula. Notice how increasing the spacing between the magnetic field emitters transforms the shape of the nucleus until finally a disk of plasma forms around the nucleus. Also notice the rapid spin of the plasma around the magnetic field emitters even though the field emitters are stationary. After running the experiments for a few days with the CERN bowls, they were removed from the vacuum chamber and photographed, revealing the patterns you see here. These amazing patterns will also be discussed further in part 4 of this series of videos. Then once it was realized that the key pattern required for this theory was found in the dome at CERN, it was also discovered that CERN was not the only place with the required pattern. The pattern has been there for centuries at the Pantheon in Rome, which has been referred to as the Vault of the Heavens. Then the required shape was also found at St. Peter's Basilica. Then one of my favorites was found at St. Paul's Cathedral in Medina, Malta. Notice the angels circling the hole at the top of the dome, and compare that to the glowing ring that is found inside the bowl-shaped magnetic field emitters in the vacuum chamber. No wonder mankind was unaware of these bowl-shaped magnetic fields. They were hiding right in front of us the whole time. In this image, the magnetic field lines around the typical structure of an atom, a star, or even a galaxy are shown in magenta. But we need to remember that even though the magnetic field lines measured around matter are of this shape, it is not due to a bar-shaped magnet along the axis of the matter being measured. There are in reality dual bowl-shaped magnetic fields around the nucleus that cause this measured shape of magnetic field lines. Here is how we were mistaken in our understanding of the true forces at work in galactic structures. These large structures in space could not be explained by the currently accepted theory of gravity alone. So as we studied these structures, it was assumed that some extra source of gravity was required to explain how all this matter could be held in orbit around the central star in these galaxies. This is how the theory of black holes became accepted when trying to explain these structures. It was a totally reasonable line of thinking. But it was found that even using black holes with incredible gravity, we could still not explain how these large structures in space are held together and function. So the next mistake that we made was to assume that some other extra matter was there to explain these large structures in space. Along came our theory of dark matter. But even when we applied both the theory of black holes and dark matter to our puzzle, there still were some problems. It seems the universe itself was not only expanding, but that that rate of expansion was increasing. 
To explain this, we came up with the theory of dark energy. So now we have invented three totally unproven theories to explain what we find in the visible and known matter in space. Black holes, dark matter, and dark energy. But they are not required at all if you eliminate the basic misunderstanding of magnetic fields around the nucleus of all structures in space. Once you properly understand this revolutionary theory of how magnetic fields can cause not only plasma, but actual matter to form the structures we find in space, you will clearly see that black holes, dark matter, and dark energy do not exist at all. We made some fatal mistakes in our thinking. Utilizing this new theory, you will find that even bizarre structures like Gomez's hamburger are now very easy to understand.